Welcome back to International Scale Model, I'm Lee. Uh, today we're going to do a review on a kit from Hazagawa. I haven't done a review on a Hazagawa kit apart from a couple of their egg planes. Uh, but this is the MV22B Osprey. Now, this is one of those kits that I've kept saying I want to get, I want to get, I want to get. And, you know, for one reason or another, it, just, it falls down the list a bit. Uh, and I've, for the last like two or three years, I think this has been out now, I've thought, oh, I really, really want that. Um, and uh, I saw it online and it was a bargain price of £6. Um, I think it was from Hobby Link Japan. They had a special on it. You order so much, and then you get this one for six quid. So uh, I thought, yep, that'll do. Six pounds for for this. It's at one seventy two. It's not usually. It's not my normal scale, but I think it's such a large aircraft that it's not going to matter too much anyway. And I love this thing. It's absolutely fantastic. It's so futuristic. It really is sci-fi. Anyway, let's have a look inside the box. Okay, so the Hasegawa Osprey in one seventy two flavour. Obviously, a size that I don't usually do a lot with. Um, but it is. this is one of those kits that when, since it was released I've been like oh, I want to get that, I want to get that and just never got around to getting it. Um, as I said earlier it was, I got it for £6 off of a, um, Hobby Link Japan as a part of a special deal when I bought some other stuff so I couldn't say no. Um, but uh, not bad at all, I've been looking forward to this one. So, But there's the box art, not particularly amazing but it does look quite nice. I've got to say it's just very sci-fi, it's just so sci-fi. Uh, on the box itself, there's not a lot else. Um, it shows one with its uh, blades up there in vertical mode uh, and the paint scheme and everything. But apart from that, nothing to write home about. But, so let's have a look inside. Pull this plastic out. Right, okay, so we have one bag full of sprues, um, which is a bit airfixy if you ask me. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if this is a rebox or something else, but uh, let's give it a show now. I don't like to see that, especially these days. It should all be in separate bags, really. So let's have a look at the first, the fuselage. Okay, so. We have got, um, it's not bad size actually, for 172, see the size of it, it's a good six inches long, the fuselage. Uh, detail, uh, it's got obviously recessed panel lines, not many of them, I've got to say, it looks like quite a smooth aircraft and there's not a lot of the panel lines. What is there is, is clean and crisp, but the, the, um, the holes are nicely formed, doesn't seem to be any flash anywhere on there whatsoever. It's very shiny plastic, it's quite solid actually, it's a solid plastic, definitely solid plastic. You can see here you've got this little loop inside here and everything, that's, that's a nice little touch. So the, the, the detail level is very good indeed, um, I do like that. Uh, you've then got uh, the seat parts in, for the uh, cockpit and everything there, part of looks like a bulkhead inside with a fire extinguisher on it there. Uh, but no flash whatsoever, but it is, it is really hard plastic I've got to say. But no flashing, they're very well moulded. Don't see any problems with that. We then have <coughs> several little sprues here. So we'll just do the first one. Uh, looks like some of the prop blades. And again, a good sign of a, a, a kit is when you've got the prop blades, is uh, if there's any flash on the outside edges. And I've got to say, they're absolutely fantastic. No flash or burring at all on the edges. And they look like they'll fit together rather well. Though there is this. You can see these EPMs here, which might just need a very slight file down. Not not a lot, but just a little bit. Uh, but they look like they're going to be very nice indeed. Very sharp, very nice, very clear. Um, we've then got uh, a couple of pilots, actually. Yeah, that's a bit of a nice touch. Very tiny. Usually I don't put top pilots um, in aircraft at all. Um, whether I do on this one or not, I don't know. You've got an intake there. Uh, the wheels are one piece, which I like, uh, although they do have, if you can see some EPMs on there as well, three EPMs on each wheel, so that will need a little bit of work on it. But apart from that, everything else is uh, up together and looks nice, very nice indeed. Uh, we've got uh, a mirror sprue there by the looks of it, so we don't have to worry about that one. We have then got uh, the upper section of the wings, uh, very, a bit of slight release agent on there, but not a lot. Um, detail's got this raised detail here, uh, which is obviously for the uh, vortex generators. Um, 
but uh, the, the panel lines are all nice again. They all look, look to be in scale. Uh, the rivets and everything are nice. It looks very good indeed. There's not a hint of flash anywhere on the kit. Um, as I say, it's all this like really, really what I call rigid plastic. Uh, but uh, no problems with that at all. That looks like it's going to drop together actually. I haven't seen one of these built. I've got to say I haven't seen anyone that's built one of these. Uh, that's a mirrored sprue of the other one we've got. Um, still quite a bit of plastic for a 172. Uh, that's for sure. Um, you've got then got the uh, tail. And everything very nice, nicely moulded. Again, panel lines are very good indeed. Looks like we've got another bulkhead here. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of cockpit detail. I've got to say, I haven't seen any real... Ah, oh, here we go. It's on the last piece, that's why. You can see here we've got the um, uh, the uh, engine nacelles. And you can see some nice bit of detail there. Let's zoom you in a bit just so you can see that. Okay. So you can see some nice detail in there, that, that's going to be picked out really nice. And you can see it on the box here, it's these parts here, uh, which will be on the other sides, as you can see here. Uh, so it's a nice bit, it gives you a good idea, so a, a really nice little touch. Uh, it's not going to be left plain and boring or, or anything like that. You've then got uh, the cockpit there, you've got these screens, obviously a nice um, green clear colour, uh, like a clear green in Tamiya, all guns would look nice on there. That'll bring those up really well. And um, we've got some more instrument panels here as well. A little bit of detail that you can pick out on there. Not a great deal to, to write home about, but um, still nice, nice that there is. And you can see the detail, level of detail on there is very nice. The engraving's good. And it's uh, indicative of the whole aircraft. And then you've got the obviously the rear loading bay there as well. It's all together looking at the plastic, very nice indeed. Looks like. Oh, we've got a Prop head there. Let's just build that before we lose it. Um, it looks like it's going to be a very nice kit to to build together. And it has a gower. Um, you know, most of their kits are very good. There are some pigs out there though. Uh, we then got the clear parts. Uh, we've got some of those. I would imagine that's to enable you to move the rotors. Um, you then got a base, uh, which is a nice touch. I do like that. Sometimes I like doing the bases. Um, depends whether you're going to wheel up or wheel down on this. Um, but that, that is all, all to do with the base, uh, so it's a nice little touch. Uh, the glass itself, let's have a look. Very clean, very clear. Um, cockpits, it's got quite a large cockpit area, so you're going to be able to see inside the cockpit, so you're going to want to take care. But uh, having a look at the lensing, as you can see, there's not much lensing there at all. For 172, that's absolutely brilliant. So very nice indeed. So I'm loving that. I do like the clear parts are very good, although there's not a lot of them, but very nice. Okay, so decals or decals, 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 decals. Um, big argument on all our videos about these. Um, we call them what we like because this is a free country. Uh, but uh, we're having a look here and they are very nice. They look all clean and in register. There's a lot of areas like these ones here where you're going to have a lot of empty space. I think these are going to need cutting up a little bit. Um, some of them are going to need trimming here and there. Uh, but apart from that, that looks like um, a decal for inside, the decking on the inside of the aircraft. Same here. Because that's, um, oh, it could be actually looking at it. No, no, that's, let's go across the top and the wing sections here on top. So yeah, it's not going to be easy to paint that, so that will have to be sprayed. You've then got decals for the instrument panels and things like that. I might go with a green on that, because that's what it would light up like. I would have to see when I'm building what they, what how, how well that comes up. <clears throat> but uh, it looks like you've got two schemes here. Very nice indeed, but they are all register. Nice and cut, nice colours. They're a little bit muted, which is what I like. They're not glossy. They're like a satin coat. Uh, and now we've got the instructions. Okay, so the instructions, it's uh, slightly smaller than an A4 uh, booklet. It's going to be an open out one. A um, little bit about the off spray on the front here uh, in English and Japanese. Uh, you then open up, uh, you've got sprue maps here, all numbered, which is a very nice touch. Uh, the paint call outs are for guns by the looks of it. Uh, they're all H97, so I would imagine that's all guns call outs, so that's, I'm uh, a fan of that already. And if we open it up here, We've then got uh, the instructions. You can see it's quite a 
a large piece. Um, on here, obviously, paint all the insides, put them together. You've got the wing sections in the tail. And then you've got a lot of greebles going on the outside as well. Um, and then obviously depending on whether you have the wheels up or wheels down, uh, you've got a, a little thing there to cut. The wheel sections themselves. I'm not sure if this will be a tail sitter. Um, I'll probably be tempted to put a bit of weight in the nose anyway. I always do, um, just in case. Um, but uh, And then you've got the pilots, all the call outs for the pilots and everything, and then popping the glass on last. Etc. Etc. Then doing the nacelles and yet those nuts are to help move it. Obviously, you then got it. You can have it on a display stand, and it's an angled display stand, so you can have it either pitched up, pitched down. So that's a nice little touch. Now you then got paint callouts. Uh, we have uh, two schemes. We have uh, VMM one six five US Marines MCAS Miramar two thousand eleven. And VMM 265 US Marines MCAS Futenma 2012. Uh, I've got to say, I kind of like the Japanese writing on there, uh, but I also like the black and the, the yellow uh, which they've got on the thing here. So it'll uh, be one of those that you decide what you're going to do when you do it, I think. Um, but apart from that, very nice indeed. A little bit on there how to do decals and everything, nothing to write home about. So overall, uh, it looks like a quite a nice kit. For a 172, it's gonna build up quite big, and that'll sit nicely in the display cabinet for sure. Um, I haven't seen any build reviews of it, so I don't know how it does build up. Being Hazegawa, one of their newer kits, I would imagine it's gonna be quite, uh, quite a nice build. Uh, but there's a lot of plastic there for a 172, so enough to keep you busy and keep you happy for a little while, I'm sure. But uh, it's looking like a recommend from me, and I do love this aircraft. It's just such a sci-fi looking thing, it really is. Um, but uh, a thumbs up from that, I'll probably say a good solid 7.5, 8 out of 10 for that. Uh, but that is the Hasegawa 172 MV22B Osprey. Until next time, take care, bye-bye.